Hey everyone, this is Darius from Shot Column sitting here with Young Buck after a very interesting game against yeah. Vitality where Broxer kind of carried you guys. Yeah, it feels kind of disgusting to win when we absolutely did not deserve it in any way, shape or form. We were just we got outperformed in every stage of the game, except the smite stage. So Sometimes that's enough? Sometimes it's enough, and then if it's a best of one, you just go back home with a smile on your face. <laughs> I mean, at the end of the day, the points are all that matters. You're now standing at the top all by yourself. Does that feel extra special? I mean, it does because there is a lot of pressure with only four games left, knowing that there were two teams with one game away from us breathing in our neck. And now we only have G2. Like They're, they're still playing guys, so I don't know what if they win. But I could, let's say they win, right? Mm. We're one game away from them, and we win the tiebreaker. Exactly. So they need to win one more game than we do in the ne next four, which is which is quite unrealistic, but possible. But at least we secure top two, I think, because now we have an even score with Fatality, two game lead. You know, it, things would have to go very bad for us if we actually wanted to give away that lead. Yeah. Um, now, luckily for you guys, obviously, Broxa did grab that man of the match. Uh, oh, really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, even though he only went one, four, and six, but hey, KDA yeah. doesn't really matter for junglers especially, right? Yeah, like if you smite the Baron, then you can be one and nine, right? Yeah, <laughs> basically, that's how you win the yeah. game. Uh, interestingly enough, though, like th this has been a consistent thing, uh, especially when Fnatic was losing at times. And uh, I I, ch I go to Reddit today, I checked like the, the news threads and stuff, and because of the loss yesterday, again there's a new thread about Bren Bench Broxer essentially. Mm -hmm. Like, and he's he's talked about this before on Twitter about like he was surprised negatively in a way to see all of a sudden a decent amount of hate in a way. Yeah. Uh, what would you like to reply to the Fnatic fans and the Broxa doubters out there? I, I personally don't really understand why people would doubt him in the first place because he's not a flashy player, but every team needs like the backbone of a team. And that's Broxa, like he controls our early games, like he controls the plans. Like if, sure, sometimes in the early game people int, but it's not his fault. He's really clear in what he's going to do, where the enemies are, and he's like the chess master for the early game. And he does very well. Like. No mistake about that. And we have so had some really good early games. Um, but a lot of times we're just drafting for it. But I think Broxa is just the backbone of the team. He's always willing to pick for the team composition. He's easiest to work with, communicates extremely well. And you need that team. And then you need that in your team. And preferably in your jungle, support, top lane, right? These kind of people. Mm -hmm. And your carries, your flashy players. That's the mid laners and the AD carries. So we have a really good, suitable component. Like, I wouldn't want a flashy player in the jungler and then, like, um, a backbone in the mid lane, for example. Uh, so Broxa has so much value to the team, and maybe people don't see it, but really he is a star player. Okay, well, you guys heard it. Uh, speaking of star players, a lot of debate about MVPs going around, the Fishy releasing his yeah. top five list and stuff. What's your personal take without trying to be too biased, of course? Uh, I guess I would put Caps and Reckless on one and two without being too biased. <laughs> um, no, I think Caps Reckless are in the top five. Mm -hmm. Bunder has been doing very well. Jizuki is definitely up there. Like he's, he already has rookie of the split. We don't even have to vote, <laughs> right? Like that's real. But he might even be MVP of the split. And Perks is doing really well. So I think these five players are the standouts for now. Um, and thinking of some other teams with some high performing players, I, I don't see anyone that is hitting on that level. Like mm -hmm. these people, Caps Reckless, Bunder, Perks, and. Suzuki have such high highs that once when they show up, you know, you just feel powerless playing against them. Or you can feel your enemy being powerless because you just know, you know, there's nothing they can do. Like they will win every lane, every matchup, and if they get ahead, they will snowball a game for your entire team. That said, I mean Caps and Jizuka obviously faced off in that yeah. uh, game. Uh, Caps got pretty camped in a way again. Uh, wasn't that something that you guys had on paper, given that that's exactly what happened last time you played Vitality and that's what caused you to lose in a way? Yeah, a certain coach may have told Caps that uh, Kelius likes to gank, cheese gank mid lane level 2, level 3. Mm -hmm. And then a certain mid laner may have not taken Valkyrie on Corky on level 3 or level 2. And then he got ganked. So yeah, then a certain mid laner died. <laughs> What else can he do as a coach? Uh, yeah, exactly. You know, like I give him the information. He has to do with what he wants. Like, I'm, if I look into his brain, I'm also thinking like, okay, I'm a Zac. I'm level three. I'm not ganking mid lane because that's like the one champion you usually don't gank with on level three. Yeah. And then you get ganked. You know, I, I can see the argument from his side because yeah. if I'm in his brain, I'm a mid laner. I'm saying, yeah, I'm gonna put a second point in queue. But if my coach tells me he likes to gank mid lane level three, you know, then maybe. Maybe next time. Maybe you'll face Vitality in the playoffs and this time he will put yeah. that point into Valkyrie instead of the cube. Yeah.
Uh, hopefully. Yeah. Uh, speaking of mid laners, uh, obviously 8.4 hit, uh, it, very high impact for mid laners specifically. All of a sudden, Misfits have been playing Anivia and, uh, you know, Koki coming back into it as well because he can abuse tier essentially. Uh, what do you think of the, the mid lane champion pools suspiciously getting wider? It gets a little bit wider, a little bit narrowed in the sense like, I mean, Zoe is out. Mm. Thank the gods. <laughs> and now Rise is even stronger than he was before. Yeah. Azir is equally strong, a little bit stronger. Cassio is making a bit of a comeback here and there. And then you still have the Galio. You still have the core key. Like that's pretty much unchanged. But we're gonna see a few more counter match up counter picks like well, I was gonna say Anivia, but it's just not a good champion. Like they I mean, fool me once, shame on you, fool me twice, shame on me. But <laughs> so They're I mean, they did lose on it today. That's, uh, you know, they tried again, and then it was like, okay, um, I guess we've just picked something with long range in mm -hmm. mid lane and AD carry, and good luck with your Anivia, right? Which is what we should have done in the first day. But yeah, I think, like, picks like Casio will see more play. You might see a little bit of Victor and Zillion here and there as counter matchups or for good scaling, so that's really interesting. And other than that, I don't think mid lane has been completely figured out yet. Okay. Victor is interesting because I remember him being like at the start of the of the split, he was kind of viewed as like a complete trash tier mid laner, you know, Abdo saying he's like th the worst mid laner there is and that kind of stuff. And all of a sudden, after continuous buffs and item changes, of course, he's showing up again. Yeah, and because he has a few decent matches, like he's okay into Azir, he, he's okay into Galio and Ryze, uh, if you build the right items. My mid lane likes to go call on Victor, so, you know. But what? and he has some really good matchups, but I guess I shouldn't be saying that because we might actually get yeah. in these matchups in LCS. Like he has some matchups where if enemies pick it, they're like slam the victor, you know? That's it. <laughs> Boom. Done. Yeah. Lane one, game one, easy. Yeah, pretty much. Because if you win your lane as victor and you know you're gonna outscale your enemy ninety nine out of one hundred times. Okay. Interesting. That said though, the game against against Misfits yesterday, what was going wrong there? I forgot what oh okay. So first of all, we messed up our draft. Okay. We were absolutely not prepared for Anivia. And then we're like, okay, I guess we can play Kassadin, we can maybe play Talia. They banned Kassadin and Talia. Um, yeah. And then we were like, okay, what do we play? We did. We really were n not familiar with this pick at all mm -hmm. because it didn't show up in our scrims. And we just, let's resort back to our comfort, which is Corky. Like, we were probably going to pick Corky any anyway, maybe, because it's just comfort. We were like, we play Victor as a comfort, but it doesn't feel that right. Maybe Kassio, but <laughs> we just didn't have the right pick. And then later on, like, we should not have picked Corky because they had Shen. That was the worst pick we could have done. Mm -hmm. But in the moment, that was just the comfort pick that we fell back on, okay. just like two days ago. So draft went very wrong. And then we put Caps in a matchup where he was going to get outscaled or equally scaled, but he lost pressure. And what went wrong is that a few times we called that the enemy was moving towards the lane that we wanted to engage on, but then the fight wasn't called off. So we just fight 3v5, like a 3v4, knowing Anivia is coming and we don't call that Shen has ult as well. Like, and then suddenly there's a surprise party waiting for you, you know? And so it was just mostly communication, not being decisive and calling fights off early on. Okay. Fair enough. Now that said, uh, Reckless did put an insane performance at times, like yeah. getting those picks. Uh, and of course, in the very final fight, he might have gone a bit too overboard trying to go for Hans, and he was just too protected by the likes of Shen, etc. So no chance to reach him there. Yeah, I mean, he played perfectly for like 52 minutes and 51 seconds, and then <laughs> those last three seconds. Yeah. What can you ask from an AD carry, you know, who played yeah. perfectly for so long? Like, one mistake and the game is over. Yeah, but that said, he did put in an insane performance yesterday. He put in an insane performance Absolutely. today. Uh, again, I mean, those uh, last fights, and especially, like, uh, after the, the, the Elder Drake was stolen, uh, of course, it was a 4v4 situation, and it looked like, okay, Vitality still might be able to defend it, and then Reckless just deletes Jizuka on the side, and just, yeah, then it's the game over. It's just done. Yeah, I thought, so, I thought they were going to end a, a few times. Also, around the 31-minute mark, we killed two of their players. We were like, I think 4v3, but they, the Jizuki was dead and we were mm -hmm. on their Nexus Towers. Mm -hmm. And then the mid laner decides to recall. I mean, it was a team decision actually. Mm -hmm. Like I have to add that. Mm -hmm. He asked like, hey, I have package. Should, should I base and come back with package? And, he was, and then we said, yeah, do it. Mm -hmm. And then we engaged on the enemy three man unit. And if we, had, if we had Corky there in the moment, we would have won the game. But it was a team decision for him to base, which was really wrong because we could have just ended the game at 31 minutes right there. And then just ended up in a big fiesta. That's basically my solo queue games in a nutshell. Yeah, mine too. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much on all ranks. Good to know. Uh, yeah, that said though, uh, there was a really interesting play when um, 
after like 40 minutes and there was like a back and forth between Drake and stuff or like after the Baron and then uh, you tried to uh, so us teleported in I believe and Koki was there as well and you tried to end but it wasn't really possible it was this weird back and forth yeah I don't know what's going on I mean it was it was a planned thing but uh, all we had to do was cancel base right which we tried but Cyan just had a free base or TP I don't know what he did but the really interesting play was a level one play. Did you see that? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm the level one choreographer for this team, and you know, <laughs> we were we were discussing like, okay, this guy always stands here. We can uh, we can how about we just three men flash over the wall and wait for him? But then we ended up getting Brown and Tristana, and so we just Tristana W's over the wall, Brown W's yeah. after him. I just wanted to let the people know, you know. Sometimes you just get a assert dominance. And let the other teams know, like, I'm watching your level ones and I'm coming for you. <laughs> okay. The level one master has spoken. Is there anything you'd like to say to the other teams out there besides that you're coming for their level ones? Yeah, I want to apologize to Vitality. We did not deserve that win. I want to apologize to G2 for winning last week. We also did not deserve that. But uh, good luck in playoffs. Okay, very respectable sportsmanship right here. Yeah. This was Joy from Fnatic and Darius from Shotcall. I hope you guys had a good day. See you then. Hey everyone, this is Darius from the Shotcall and I hope you just enjoyed that interview. This is a generic end card, so make sure to click here for another interview or here for a different interview. And if you want to check out more content, specifically from the NALCS, make sure to visit theshotcaller.net for more interviews and other esports content. Have a good day.